Let's have a look at the bolt and receiver parts for a Western Field Model 550 pump shotgun. Hi, Jim Humphrey from Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training. And this is the bolt out of a Western Field Model 550 16 by gauge pump shotgun. Virtually identical to the Mossberg 500 uh, bolt from the 1970s. So a uh, quick uh, nomenclature review. Uh, we've got the firing pin, uh, the firing pin retaining pin, the, the bolt, uh, the extractors which are unique. There's a right extractor and a left extractor. The extractor springs are common but the pins are different, right and left pins. Then we've got the bolt lock pin and the bolt lock. All the pins in this uh, bolt are groove pins. Uh, the retaining pins are all grooved on one end, so they go in one direction and come back out the same direction. To be careful about the orientation. The bolt lock pin is uh, grooved, but it's in the middle. It's, it acts like a hinge. This bolt has two extractors, and they're different. The uh, left extractor has uh, deeper cuts uh, in the tip than the right extractor does. We have to be sure to keep those straight. Uh, when I took this bolt apart, I discovered a couple of burrs. One of them was right here in the throat of the rear of the bolt where the firing pin goes in. And the other one was on the uh, firing pin uh, shoulder uh, where it uh, bangs up against the bolt lock. So I just took a couple of uh, jeweler's files and cleaned those two burrs up. I'll start the assembly with the extractors. Uh, the right and left ones are unique, remember? So I drop the spring in and put that uh, right extractor in. And I get the pin. It's the longer of the two pins. The left extractor has a shorter pin. And it's a groove pin, so I have to be careful to orient it correctly. Put the non-grooved end in first. And then I use just a bit of brass wire to try to line up the hole to make it a little bit easier to get it started. I get it started with the brass hammer and get it seated through the hole. Uh, but I've got to knock it down uh, flush inside its hole. I can only get it so far without using a punch. I found this was a pretty tough one once it got down to the groove, so I actually went uh, from the brass punch to the steel punch. Uh, steel transfers the energy a little more efficiently than brass does. And I don't like using the steel when I don't have to, but sometimes you just got to have the force. The left extractor installs much the same as the right. Uh, an important difference though is the left one uses the short pin. Also, these pins are all grooved on one end, so the grooved end goes in last. It's the larger end, so it goes in and retains the pin. You have to be careful to orient the pin correctly. Also, on this left extractor, I want to be careful not to overdrive the pin. I want to get it down flush. Both pins have to be down flush with the top so they don't protrude at all and interfere with the movement of the bolt. But the left pin, if you overdrive it or use a long pin, it'll interfere with the movement of the bolt because there's a groove here that has to be clear from the obstruction of that pin that guides the uh, bolt. The firing pin has to be oriented so this flat spot uh, allows the retaining pin to get past the firing pin. This uh, retaining pin has to be knocked down flush with that surface to prevent any interference. The bolt lock pin is uh, grooved in the middle so that it uh, will grip the bolt lock, but uh, not the bolt. It passes completely through the bolt, so it kind of acts like a teeter-totter hinge. The lug on the bolt lock uh, goes to the front end, 
and then I have to drive this pin through so it's equal on both sides. Uh, it was a pretty tough pin so I had to get a s steel hammer and a steel punch by the time I was finished. When it's uh, installed correctly, the bolt lock should teeter-totter on that pin. The pin should not protrude either side of the bolt. And the firing pin should only be able to protrude out its hole a very small amount. Alright, let's have a look at the receiver. It's not nearly as complicated as the bolt. There's only the two parse groups. The, uh, we have the receiver, the safety lock, the safety button, the safety screw, the ejector, and the ejector screw. I'll start with the safety. Uh, I have to get the safety lock uh, up in its groove and it has to be correctly oriented. And then I'm going to put a little bit of um, Loctite on that safety button screw uh, to ensure it doesn't come loose. It's uh, pretty easy to install. Line up the hole and insert the screw. The ejector fits in a matching cut out in the inside wall of the receiver. Uh, likewise, I'll put a little Loctite on that screw to uh, keep it in place. Well, that's about all there is to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Jim Humphrey from Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training. Remember, if you're a gun owner, you're an ambassador for all of us. So be responsible, be safe, and always represent firearms in a positive manner. Thanks for watching.